There's a little bit of Super Bowl news. There's some other football news. And then there's the trade deadline that awaits. Here's what we'll do. We'll do a little uh, one-minute show meeting on air. Uh, what do you vote we go first? Oh, Kyrie. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what it, and I already know your vote. Yeah, I voted for Tom Brady just because it's news, and we got some news breaking on Cowherd. You know, I like to—I'm a company guy. I like to service Fox Sports Radio. So. Uh, or is it because you saw Tom Brady posting a picture in his underwear? <laughs> wow! Earlier today from a prison camp. And somewhere. Uh, well, prison camp at the beach—is that what that was? <laughs> uh, prison camp at the beach. It is—is—is is, is, is that why? Is that—that's—that's that's the reason for the, Might for be. the Brady? Could, it's possible. I'm gonna uh, I, I be in the deciding vote. I'd be like the vice president in Congress. I'm gonna go with Kyrie. And, All right. And, and, and the reason is, it was the biggest story on Friday. He's uh, he's been in the news a ton. He's also a great basketball player, and he's going to play with arguably the best player in the NBA. And he's not going to play with the Lakers. So here's the first thing, Joe Sy. Awesome, because you did exactly what you said you were going to do. And oh yeah, by the way, a little bit of tweak at the end of the day. What what do I mean by that? Reports are that Joe Sy was the owner of the Brooklyn Nets said, where does Kyrie want to go? The Lakers? Cool. Anywhere but the Lakers. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Because we've gotten to a place in the NBA, and it's a league that, here's what happens. Okay? What happens is when you pick apart things you don't like about the NBA, or you pick apart things you don't like about the NFL, you pick apart things that people think, well, you're a hater, you don't, no, no, no. I will sit here and tell you, and, so, and whenever we send out these clips, never edit out this part. These players are better than I would ever was, I ever hoped to be. Okay? Many of them, and I, I'm not a hater on the skill of today's basketball player. And the NBA players now, like a Kyrie Irving, he's more skilled than I could ever dream to be. Chris Paul, how Chris Paul plays, that's how I dreamed of playing. Right? Where you create shots for others. When you have to, you can score. you got to play with toughness and leadership. And sometimes people don't like you, but that's the nature of being, if you want to be, Six foot one and below in the NBA, you got to be one of those guys that everybody hates, except your teammates. That, that's it. That's the reality of it. Were there guys that you wouldn't pass the ball to because you couldn't trust them? No. Oh, we couldn't trust them? Yeah. Like, like, well, you got a KYB. That, the, you got to know your boys. Yeah, because that was always the thing of Chris Paul. And, and I've, you know, Karan Butler, who's our teammate here for a while at the network, he would be like, hey, CP3 is not going to pass you the ball if he doesn't trust you. Correct. Yep. LeBron James, same way, by the way. Yeah. Like, LeBron James would, you know, people would say, like, in the first half, LeBron passed you the ball. He doesn't think you can make a shot. He ain't passing the ball in the second half, so you might as well. And that was just his way of make the coach. He wouldn't tell the coach who to take out. He just wouldn't pass the ball when they're open. And the coach's like, well, best I get, best I got to take him out. The point is that this is not me hating on the NBA. Those guys are awesome, amazing. And in many ways, I like a lot of the parts of how the NBA game is played. I hate this, the, the, some of the load management stuff, which is not needed, okay, because it, that you, don't, you don't appreciate why you actually make all the money that you make. You don't make it for one game, for one performance. The reason that all the, the whole business works is the 82 games, right? That's the reason everything makes sense is the 82 games. The reason that the playoffs make so much money is the seven-game series instead of three-game series. And, and, and when you don't respect that, you don't understand your own business or what's made you valuable. So I have an issue there. But the biggest issue with the NBA is guys not understand, like, you work for a company. You work for these people. And you can say whatever you want about Joe Tsai and being, a, you know, and his connections with China and how he, and, and his money, whatever. Like, you work for him. And, and, and do it, being destructive to his property, to his... He didn't buy the Brooklyn Nets for any other reason than he wanted to win. And he pays you to go out and compete every day. And he supports you with a private jet to fly the team around, an unbelievable practice facility, et cetera, et cetera. And guys, have, they want to determine their own destiny. They believe it's a player's league, that they should determine everything, especially especially Kyrie Irving, who had the balls, okay, who had the chutzpah is the Yiddish term, on a call with the NBA PA during COVID to say, hey, why don't we start our own league? These rules are junk, right? We shouldn't play in the bubble. He said it was like a slave mentality. Like, bro, what? You're making $30 million a year? Slave mentality? What are you even talking about? So, so Joe Sy, can't, you can't control if a guy wants to play, doesn't want to play. If a guy wants to be traded, doesn't want to be traded. But you can damn sure control where you trade a guy to. And he didn't send him to basketball Siberia, right? He didn't send him to Charlotte. 
He didn't send him somewhere. You know, that would have been great. Like, send him to Charlotte where Nike wants nothing to do with Kyrie. And <laughs> LeBron played every game. I mean, I mean, excuse me, Jordan played every game, and you're going to send Kyrie there. He didn't send him, but he did tweak him on the way out the door. And, oh, yeah, by the way, here's the thing. People are going to ask me all week long, do I think Kyrie and Luka can work? Oh, they only play with one basketball. The truth is, basketball-wise, I think it works. I think it's fine. You know, Kyrie, honestly, is not really a point guard. He wasn't a point guard growing up. He barely played point guard Duke because he only played 10 games. And when he was at his best in Cleveland, he wasn't really the point guard in Cleveland. People think that when you bring the ball up the court, you're a point guard. No, a point guard really kind of controls everything. And that's what LeBron does. That's what, uh, that's what, uh, what what's going to happen in, in Dallas, right? Where you have a guy who is... Luca is an unbelievable kind of controller of the game. I think offensively that works. Do I have questions about defense? Sure. Are they going to win an NBA title? No. Right? But here's the bigger thing. Kyrie Irving is poison to your culture. He just is. He's poison to your culture. It's not a buyer beware. If you don't know by now, you ain't changing that. Right? Just take a look at the Celtics before, during, and since. Take a look at the Nets before. Okay? Even Cleveland after he left. People forget this, right? They didn't win a title after he left. It was an unbelievable. But one, LeBron wanted him gone. That's why he asked to be traded from Cleveland. And two, they still went to the NBA Finals without him. And he's a marvelous talent. And it's maybe not even about the results. It's about you enjoy going to work. And if you listen to the Nets before the season, when last year ended, they wanted guys that played for each other. Basically, all, all Sean Mark said is like, hey, man, I just want, we just want to enjoy this thing. And what, is the, what is the point of doing all this stuff if it's not any fun? Kyrie's not fun. And it's not because he's dumb, but he's one of those guys that's smart but thinks he knows everything. Okay? He's... He, he, he's just obtuse to the reality of life. And congratulations to Joe Sy who said, what do you want to do most? Cool. I'm not sending you there. Now, then you run into the, did the Lakers offer enough? Do, what, what did this? And, and by the way, what did Brooklyn get back in return? They got back Spencer Dinwiddie. Is Spencer Dinwiddie as talented as Kyrie Irving? No. But you know what? He's been in Brooklyn before. They know how he operates. He's a great dude, a great team dude. And they're not going to win an NBA championship. But you know what? They'll enjoy going to work a whole hell of a lot better. Kyrie Irving is a coach killer. He is poison to your culture. And this is not me saying it. It's everybody in basketball knows it. Everyone in basketball knows it. And that's what happened to, to Dallas. And Dallas is doing what teams do out of desperation. You know, I got to find a guy to put with Luka. The only way to put a guy with Luka is to trade for somebody who's unhappy elsewhere. And the problem with trading for Kyrie is not this year. It's that reportedly, in order to get him, you got to sign him to a four-year max contract guaranteed extension and no thanks. Oh, yeah, I didn't mention the fact he's always hurt. Forget about all the other stuff. The best ability is availability. He's not available. So that's my feelings about Kyrie. Great player. There are going to be some spectacular moments. They'll play in the playoffs. They'll win more than probably people think because they think they only play one basketball and two talents like that. I think Jason Kidd's actually a really good coach and can be a really good mentor, but here's the thing. Like, Jason Kidd is just a more experienced Steve Nash, right? All-time great player, all-time great point guard, and the whole reason they brought in Steve Nash was he can relate to Kyrie Irving. How did that work out? It didn't work because Kyrie Irving is, a, is, a, 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 is poison to your culture. He does the old Baron Davis. He tries to get whoever the first coach is fired and then get his own guy in place. And that didn't work in Brooklyn, and that's why he threw a fit, and that's why he's gone. And by the way, Brooklyn also, the reason he wanted to be traded reportedly was they put in, his, in a potential contract extension that it was based upon results, winning championships. Which is, I mean, why would anybody walk away from that? You know, like, hey, dude, look, you want to be here? Great. Win championships, you get all the money you want. No. What does that say? What, what does that say? What is the point of keeping score if we're not playing to win? So that's my thoughts on Kyrie. What do you, th what do you got, Dan Byer? Uh I really can't uh, counter anything that you said. And, and point after point that, that you made, there is, there is nothing to argue against it. When the trade went down yesterday, I said I loved it for the Mavericks. And the reason, with everything you said, the, the reason that I looked at the trade the way that I did, and I didn't look at Kyrie as – for everything that you laid out that I can't, I can't defend. 
it's the point of the Mavericks weren't going anywhere in this right. incarnation right. of them. Right, right. So I totally am, fair. I am all for the team trying to, and you're right, they probably won't win the NBA title. But they'll be fun. They'll win games. Yes. You know, I, 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 just, I, I, just, I just think, like, I, and I know Mark Cuban a little bit, and Mark Cuban believes he can fix people, that he can work with people. He, he, I, we, I got in a long discussion with him one night over text um, about how he has the best medical staff ever. Like, he invests more in medical staff and evaluating how to, that. And, and if you remember his, the last time he kind of went for it in free agency, it was all guys coming off injury. It's like, Mark, you can't fix everybody. And I think he thinks he can fix it with Kyrie, that he can, that he can relate to Kyrie on a, on a granular level that other people cannot. And I, I would say, good luck, Mark. I, I think you're wasting your time. But it, I do think they're better because of it. I, I think it's inarguable. And it'll be fun. The Mavericks weren't winning a title before. They're not winning a title now. But I think with him and Luka, that's going to be a fun dynamic to watch. Just part of the story of the NBA where you have pretty much two stars in just about every one of these, one of these places. And the team with the best team usually ends up winning. You know? 